Ah, uh, the action camera. I love these things, and if you're like me, you'll probably never use them for what they were actually intended for, like taking video of surfing, skydiving, running with the bulls, or any other number of high-risk activities, which could potentially cut your life short. No, in all likelihood, you'll use it for things like taking a walk around the park, your trip to the beach, watching your cats frolic in the backyard, you know, things of that sort. The cameras are small, they take great video, and are designed to take a fair amount of abuse, which make them ideal for shooting video just about anywhere. GoPro created the action camera market with this thing, eventually going digital and inspiring other companies such as Sony and DJI to introduce action cameras of their own. My personal favorite, the Polaroid Cube, which initially sold for 99 bucks, but would eventually end its run selling for just $29.99 after a couple of revisions to the original version. The Cube was designed and developed by Ammunition and sold under the Polaroid name. It was intended as a true alternative to the GoPro. Recording at a maximum resolution of 1080p, the Cube was targeted at the more casual user, and with its magnetic base and a design that was even more compact than the GoPro, you could place it just about anywhere. But if $99 was still a bit north of your budget, knockoffs suddenly started appearing on Amazon and elsewhere for even less. They all looked a heck of a lot like a GoPro, promised a lot of the same features, and included a ton of GoPro-compatible accessories. The brand names were unfamiliar, and video quality was typically average at best, despite the listed specifications, but the price point had broad appeal, and once HD fell out of favor and 4K became the standard, these knockoffs stepped up their game, the HD sports cameras were phased out in favor of 4K versions, and sold for the same price as their HD counterparts, if not a little less. Now, not every action camera that wasn't a GoPro was trying to be a GoPro knockoff, like this one. The F4 from Unreal. Despite the usual mounting accessories included with the F4, it was less of an action camera than one designed to capture video in unique or unusual settings. With its magnetic back, you could attach it to nearly any metallic surface. All controls are clearly and uniquely laid out. It could record in full HD, and though it lacked a screen, it could be configured and operated with an app. I was a bit curious to see if they offered a 4K version of the F4 and stumbled upon this. The Unreal 4K Action Camera for the crazy low price of $29.99. I was disappointed to see that it looked like virtually every other low-cost action camera on Amazon and elsewhere, but hey, it was only $29.99. Wanting to see how the Unreal would perform against other low-cost 4K action cameras I collected over the years, I dug out two action cameras currently in my possession and available on Amazon for less than 50 bucks. The Camp Park Extreme 1 Plus for $49.99 and the Vantop Moment 3 for $39.99. I don't know if there was a Camp Park Extreme 2 or a Vantop Moment 1 and 2, but here we are. Anyway, after taking a bit of video, I transferred the files over to my computer and played each of the samples back and took a look to see what I had, and it basically came down to this. Despite different brand names, some slight variation in appearance, and a bit of variation in available features, they all turned out to be the same camera. I mean, the same camera. The Campar claimed to have image stabilization and the Vantop claimed to have a Sony image sensor, but all three recordings were the same regardless of the specified features, which really shouldn't have been that much of a surprise. They not only look similar, they have similar features and similar accessories, but if you watch these three clips, you'll discover that they have this in common too. So, yeah, they're all the same camera. And if you mount one of these on a surfboard, skydiving helmet, or on your chest with a harness while running with the bulls, they may not deliver the results you were hoping for. And as you can see here, a Vantop, Campark, or Unreal manufactured in 2020 can't keep up with a GoPro Hero 5 manufactured in 2016. Still, if you mount it on something like a kayak, 
or use it as a dash cam, it will get the job done, though be prepared for a fair amount of jitter. So, sure, $30 for a 4K action camera, but should you even buy one of these? Well, let's put it this way. If you go on eBay and look for a GoPro Hero 4, you'll find one for just $59.99, and it comes with a warranty, and it records in 4K at 30 and 24 frames per second. For $39.99, you can get a GoPro Hero 3, which will deliver better results in 1080p than any 4K budget camera currently available at the same price. And that pretty much says it all. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and click for notifications. Thanks for watching, and leave your comments below.